Hello and welcome back to our study of Penine Halacha, the teachings of Rebbe Yazim Malamed Shlita. I hope everyone had a nice Shabbos and enjoyable weekend, and we begin another week of study, the laws of Ben Adam L'chavera. Next, so we're going to get into some practical questions, and here's the She'ela. So he says, my friend, let's say, my friend broke an expensive window in one of the public buildings in the yeshuv, in, let's say, in the neighborhood. He had no intention to break the window, but what happened was, is, you know, somebody's messing around and throwing rocks, and without intention, one of the stones struck a window. So you have some sort of silent agreement that in order to protect your friend, this, let's say it's a young boy, who broke the window, so everybody who knows about this is going to be quiet. And if they're going to ask him, they're not going to tell on the one who did it. They don't want to be a malshin. And if someone breaks this code and tells on the violator, so they're going to look at him as some sort of traitor and someone who's even sitting with Lashon Hara. So In other words, so what's the ethical responsibility? What's the halachic responsibility? Do I have to turn in my friend who broke the window or not? I'm sure we can understand the question, certainly when you're dealing with children, social codes, conduct, etc. So, Tshuva, here's the, here's the answer. Whoever broke the window has to pay for his damage. And if he doesn't come on his own to pay, or if he's not able to on his own, but he doesn't understand the responsibility... So we have to instruct him. We have to give tochacha. We have to give rebuke and explain to him that anyone who damages his friend's property is responsible. How much more so if you're damaging public property? And you have to pay back. And if he's not willing to accept the responsibility on his own, He says then, the people who are in the know have the responsibility to let those in charge become aware of who broke the window so that they can properly collect the money to fix it. In other words, you have to turn your friend in. And this is a biblical commandment. He quotes a sifra in Kedoshim. If you know testimony that could save money for your friend, then you have to give the testimony and you can't be quiet. You cannot stand idly by in the blood of your brother. You don't have to only stand by and save his life. You can't stand idly by, but even to save his money. And the Rambam also writes in the Sefer HaMitzvah, and it's also a sense of returning a lost object. And since you're saving money for your friend, then there's no prohibition of Lashon Hara. So as a general rule, we have to know, the, pro- the prohibition of speaking Lashon Hara is to prevent pain to an average person. It was never meant to be used as a, as a shield, as a protection for sinners and people who do damage. On the opposite, a person has to make people aware, and you have to make sure that the people who damage can find a way to pay restitution, and then the people who were damaged, that they receive the money they deserve. And if, therefore, if you have the strength, and he says this realistically, that to, to stand with gevura, with might, because it takes a lot to stand up against your friend in this sense, Otherwise, 
a real friend, a bold friend, one with Gevura, will say, if you don't have the guts to admit it on your own that you broke the window, then I will have to tell people that you did it. And if you don't have the strength to stand against your friend and tell them what they need to do, and if you can't stand up directly to your friend and tell him what he needs to do, then you can go quietly, secretly, to those who are responsible, meaning to, let's say, the people of the city, and say, listen, I know who broke the window, and this is from whom you need to collect your restitution. This is an unbelievable principle that, unfortunately, we see too many people abusing, that we have to be careful not to use the Torah and the mitzvos to your own purpose and for the own times. People who all year long, they speak Lashon Hara about their friends, their family, their teachers, you name it. But all of a sudden, when you have to tell on someone, when you have to tattle on someone, rat someone out, whatever phrase you want to use, all of a sudden they claim righteousness and saying, oh no, it's Lashon Hara, I can't speak Lashon Hara. Sometimes children can be cruel. They're very quick to, to make fun of and to laugh at anyone who's not in their group. They whisper and they make fun of other groups. And all of a sudden, as soon as one of their own gets caught up in trouble, all of a sudden, now we become religious and righteous and self-righteous, and we claim Lashon Hara. So he actually has a very long note here, giving an interesting story here. It's not for now, but we have to understand that we can't use the Torah, the mitzvos, when it's convenient for us. We have to follow it at all times. So even when it's in a difficult situation, such as telling on a friend who did serious damage, and we have to let the authorities know who did the damage if he won't go on his own, this is a difficult challenge, but one that is required by the halacha nonetheless. So thanks so much for joining us as we'll continue this week with the laws of Ben Adam al I think we'll probably finish this chapter this week. I hope. We'll see how it goes. But in any event, have a great week ahead, a great day, and we'll see you here next time as we study Pnei Halacha. Teachings are of Leazim Alameid Shlita.